Let somebody shout hallelujah. We would like to thank God for another time to learn at his feet. We thank God for bringing us together for another digging tip. And I pray that the Lord will bless us richly. None of us will go back the same way. And the Lord will make us doers of his word in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We exalt you for another time, even at your feet. We give you praise because it's by your message that we've not been consumed. We ask, Lord, that as we go into your word this evening, you will speak to us in Jesus' name. Let your work pierce through our hearts and do the work of transformation in Jesus' name. Father, we give you all the praise. Holy Spirit divine, we ask that you take control and let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. This evening, we are going to be looking at a series. We started last time with Esther case study in Vessels unto Honor, part one. Today, we are looking at part two of that topic. Esther case study in Vessels unto Honor. That's last time, I believe, we looked at the, what happened to Vashti. Vashti fell. She did not do what the king wanted. And we looked at what vessel, what a vessel unto honor is. But this evening, we are going to be looking at the life of Esther herself. We are going to chapter 2 of the book of Esther. What are the lessons we can learn from Esther, who was a slave and became a queen? Let's go to the book of Esther chapter 1, chapter 2 rather, Esther chapter 2. We are going to be reading from verse 1 to 18. But because of our time, I will just take those verses in bits as we go along. But I will start with that first um, verse. From verse 1, I will read to verse 5. Esther chapter 2, verse 1. After these things, when the wrath of King Hyacerus was appeased, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what was decreed against her. Then said the king's servants that ministered to him, Let there be fair young virgins sought for the king, and let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto Shushan, the palace, to the house of the woman, unto the custody of Agai, the king's chamberlain, keeper of the woman, and let their things for purification be given them. And let the maiden which, faced, which pleases the king be queen instead of Vashti, and the king pleased, and the fiend pleased the king, and he did so. Praise the Lord. We found out there that Vashti had been removed. And the first thing that we noticed there was that there was need for a replacement. So this evening, I'm going to be looking at four major lessons we can learn from that story. And the first thing we have from that passage we read is that there's no room for vacuum in nature, whether physical or spiritual. There's no room for vacuum. It has to be filled up. So the first thing that happened in the first chapter of Esther was that Vashti disobeyed the king and she was removed as a queen. After some time, there was a need for replacement. That space couldn't be left for a long time. It had to be replaced. And that was when Esther came in. So the first lesson we need to know, yeah, we need to take home, is that there's no vacuum in nature. Spiritually, there's no vacuum. So we found out that the space had to be uh, filled up. Vashti had to be replaced. If you look at 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14, the Bible says of Saul, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and, all evil, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. The spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil, evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So that means that once a spirit leaves a man, another spirit will replace it. That's spiritual now. So it's either you are led by the spirit of the Lord, or you are led by the devil. So the first thing, like I said, is that there is no vacuum. So we need to be careful how we treat our hearts and ensure that we are spiritually guarded 
and we remain in the Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The second lesson we are going to learn from this passage is that Esther found grace and favor before everyone. Esther found grace. Let's go to verse 5 of that chapter 2. Verse 5. And it says, okay, let me move to verse 7 because of time. And he brought up Adasha, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for, he, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. Let's go down to verse 9. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her the things for purification with such things as belonged to her, and six, seven maidens which were meet to be given her out of the king's house. And he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the woman. Now, that was the first thing that happened. Immediately, the person, the man in charge of keeping the virgins, immediately he saw Esther. The Bible says here that the maiden pleased him. He found, she found kindness, she found favor in the sight of Hagar. That shows us that the presence of the Lord was with Esther. Though we are going to see that later, that Esther also had a part to play to receive favor. But just by entering, just by seeing the people in charge, we found out here that she found favor in the sight of people. That tells us the importance of the glory of God upon our lives the importance of um, the mercy and the presence of God upon us. So it shows here that Esther found favor. That's the first thing we found here, here. She found favor in the sight of Hagar. And she was not the only one, or he was not the only one that granted Esther favor. As we go along, we see that Esther also found favor. The Bible recorded that Esther found favor before everyone. Praise the Lord. So we're going to be looking at the reasons why Esther found favor. The first thing I've said earlier is that God's presence was with her. The glory of God was radiating over her. And by seeing her alone, you know, the favor of God, she was attracted to favor. But what did Esther do? Why did Esther find favor? Why did she find favor before men? The first thing we see in verse 10 Esther was obedient. Esther was obedient. How? The Bible says Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had changed. Sorry, I'll take that again. Again, Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. Praise the Lord. Esther was told not to disclose herself. Mordecai, the uncle, already warned her, told her, this is how you are going to do it when you get there. Do not tell them you are from this kindred. Do not tell them you are a Jew. And Esther remained obedient. It is very important for us to remain obedient to the word of God. If you want to be vessels unto honor, one of the requirements is obedience. Esther was a vessel unto honor throughout her lifetime, not just for a while. That means she was obedient all through a lifetime. So, the first thing about Esther here is that Esther was obedient to that commandment. She kept quiet. She was not loud. She was easygoing and patient. So, one lesson we should learn from the life of Esther is to ask that the Lord will give us the grace to be obedient to his word. The second thing we'll see in Esther is humility. Esther was humble. In verse 15, we find out there that she did not rely on her ability. She did not rely on her beauty. No other girls were asking for specific type of perfume, specific type of um, dress. No, they gave specifications of what they wanted. But Esther did not ask Agai any of those things. She accepted whatever Agai recommended for her. So that's wisdom. So much wisdom in her decision. So much humility. That's a great lesson for us. As we go on this month of October, Esther was humble. 
Esther depended on God to help her. Are we still depending on ourselves? Are we depending on our self-efforts? A vessel unto honor will totally depend on God. So we saw Esther here that she was humble. She did not ask for anything. She, you know, she, she trusted the judgment of Hagar. And we found that there, that actually gave her favor as well. She submitted to Hagar and did not depend on what she knew. I'd like us to just read it. I think that's verse 15. And it says, Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Habihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go into the king, she required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the woman, appointed. And let's look at the last part of it. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. That's a result of humility, result of obedience. The Bible says Esther obtained favor from the sight of all them that looked upon her. I pray the Lord will give us the grace to go and be doers of this word in Jesus' name. So we looked at two areas, two reasons why Esther was favored. One, she was obedient. Two, she was humble. The third thing about Esther was that she was submissive. She submitted to Hagar. I think I've mentioned it along the line, but just for emphasis, Esther was submissive. She did not rely on herself. She did not rely on what she knew, but she relied on the person in charge. And that gave her favor in the sight of everyone. Definitely, I believe that the fact that she did not ask for specific things, the man would have gone the extra mile to give her the best. And we could see the result at the end of the day. She was chosen above all other maidens. Esther eventually became the queen. Let's look at that. That's the third point. It says, many were called, but few are chosen. A lot of them went there. A lot of virgins, a lot of girls were there. I, I want to believe Esther was not the most beautiful. But because she went with the presence of God, she was peculiar. You know, she was different in behavior, in character, in the way she comported herself. She was totally different. And that's the mark of a vessel unto honor. So a vessel unto honor, one, must be obedient, must be humble. And that's the reason why Esther was used for that season. Not just that she became the queen, but God used that to save the entire nation. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So the third lesson, like I said, is that many were called, few are chosen. If we would like to be chosen as a vessel unto honor, then we need to depend on God, like Esther did. We need to remain obedient. Here we saw that the chosen one was the excellent one, excellent in terms of her character, excellent in terms of her beauty. That day, I believe she was just excellent, and everyone that saw her, you know, they, they, she found favor in their sight. So we should ensure that we depend on God so that he can choose us for his work. I'll just go over what we've said so far. The first thing we've said is that, one, there's no vacuum in nature, whether physical or spiritual. We must guard her heart spiritually because once the spirit of God leaves, the spirit of the devil will come in. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Esther found grace and favor. That's the second point. And we found out that there were three major reasons why Esther found favor. One, she was obedient. Two, she was humble. And three, she was submissive. The Lord will grant us the grace to do those three things as well as go on in our Christian journey in Jesus' name. Now, let's go to the fourth thing. What else can we learn from this lesson, from this passage? One, well, the fourth thing, rather, is that God is the one who promotes. If we go back to read the whole chapter, we found out that Esther was a slave. She, was some, she wasn't someone to reckon with. She actually lived with her uncle. She was even a, uh, an orphan. But God chooses whom he wills. And that's why the Bible says that I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. He's the one that raised up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the poor, the needy, 
from the dunghill, he raises them up to sit with princes and with great people. That's what God can do. So in Romans 9, 15 and 16, we found out that God said he chooses whom he wants to have mercy on. And God chose Esther on this particular day. Esther was chosen to find favor. Esther was chosen for mercy and grace. I pray the mercy of the Lord and the grace of the Lord will make a difference in our lives, even in this month of October and beyond, in Jesus' name. So God is the one that promotes, not a man. He can turn lives around. People that are, are, have been dejected, people that have been rejected, people that are, that are not reckoned with, God can turn around the life of such people. And he's still in the business of turning lives around. I believe God is set to turn the life of somebody around this season in Jesus' name. But we cannot just be praying and asking God for a turn around without doing our own bits. I'd like us to go back and look at this story of Esther. There's so much we can learn from her. But for today, we have just seen that Esther was a peculiar person. And the Bible says we are a peculiar people, holy nation. We are meant to show forth the praise of him who has called us from darkness into his marvelous light. As we go this month, I'd like us to remember that God is interested in us. He's interested in our lives. He wants us to enjoy life to the maximum. He wants us to find grace and favor before men and before him. But are we just going to rely on ourselves? Are we just going to be praying for favor without doing our part? We need also to play our own part like Esther did. We need to be obedient. We need to be humble. And we need to submit to the Lord. We need to submit to authority. And I believe the Lord will strengthen us. He will give us the desires of our hearts. We shall continually be vessels unto honor and not unto dishonor in Jesus' name. Finally, I want us to just read that verse 7 and 8 of uh, Psalm 113. Psalm 113, verse 7 and 8. It says, He raised up the poor out of the dust. And lifted the needy out of the dunghill. Verse 8 says that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. God is set to set someone above, get take someone to the top. But we saw in the life of Esther, some things happened before Esther was promoted. Esther was a vessel unto honor. Esther was an obedient child. Esther was submissive. Ex Esther was humble. I'd like us to bow our heads this evening, anywhere we are watching, and pray for these three major characteristics we have learned in the life of Esther. Pray that the Lord will help you to depend on him. Pray that the Lord will clothe you with wisdom and humility. Esther made a decision filled with wisdom. Shows that she was humble. Let's pray that the Lord will clothe us with wisdom, with humility, the Lord will help us to be submissive. The Lord will help us to continually be, be vessels unto honor. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Finally, I want us to pray. Father, make me part of a few that you will choose. Part of a few. Only few will be chosen. That's what the Bible says. Many were called. Many were called. But few are chosen. Are we going to be a part of a few? I pray the Lord will make us part of those few in Jesus' name. Pray for yourself this evening. Father, make me a part of those few that you are going to choose to continually remain vessels unto honor. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for opening our eyes to see again that we are expected to continuously be vessels unto honor not just for a period of time, for our entire life. Father, we ask for your grace this evening. Help us, Lord, to be vessels unto honor. Help us to be humble. Help us to be obedient to your word continually. Because it is only the obedient ones that will continually be vessels unto honor. Father, we ask for your grace tonight. Father, let it be so for us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for tonight. Thank God for his word. I pray the Lord will give us the grace to be doers in Jesus' name. 
This is Beautiful Gate Parish, Province 27, Aripo. We'd like to remind you of our services. On Sunday, we have two services. The first service starts with Sunday school at 8.30 a.m. The second service is at 10.30. Both of them start with Sunday school. And then on Tuesday, like this, we have our Digging Deep, which is online. Our weekly services are still online. Digging Deep at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, we have Hour of Mercy, 6.15 a.m. in the morning. The Lord bless you as you join us for those services in Jesus' name. And now it's time to take our offering. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. I'd like us to give bountifully to the Lord this evening, and the Lord will bless us in return. We'll see the account details on the screen. Please, you can pay using the account details, and the Lord help, will bless us as we give to his kingdom in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Shall we close? Our Father in heaven, we thank you one more time. We give a praise because you are a faithful God. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, because we know that we will go back transformed and reformed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the offering of your people. We ask that you bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Everyone that desires to give but couldn't give, we ask, Lord, by the time we meet again, Father, we pray you would have blessed them mightily in Jesus' name. Lord, we give you all the praise. We go forth and continually be vessels unto honor, even to your glory in Jesus' name. Blessed be thy name, Lord Jesus, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.